the beautiful ladies doing tonight? Good. Well, you have to oblige me because, um, as some of the gals will tell you, my girls will tell you that I kind of have a, a uh, thing that I do at my church. And uh, one of the things that I do is I feel that it's very, very important that we honor God through our worship. And so I was sharing with the team, and I said, oh, do you think it would be okay? And they said, Melissa, it would be nothing other than you if you didn't do it. And I said, okay. And so they said, are you going to do what song are you going to do? And I said, well, the song that we all know. And they started to laugh because they know the song that I'm going to ask all of you stand, if you would please. And I would like for us to open up and sing, Jesus Loves Me. Because even though it is a childlike song, the Lord desires for us to have a childlike heart. And I really want you to listen to those words because he tells us that his love is very great for us. Now, you have to excuse, I am not a professional singer by any means, but I do offer this voice up to the Lord in prayer. So will you oblige? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Please remain standing. I'm going to open us up in a scripture real quickly. And it is in Isaiah 55. <clears throat> For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return empty to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I have sent. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we do believe that you are sending forth your word tonight and you are looking to accomplish mighty things among your daughters. And Lord, I just pray for your reinforcement of your love that every heart that is in this room right now knows that they are loved, they are accepted, and that they have a purpose. We thank you, Father, for the works you're about to do. We ask this in your mighty name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. So, when I spoke to Harriet and, uh, about preparing for the summer, and they were doing the brainstorming here at Christ Church of Grove Farm, I had the wonderful, wonderful privilege of connecting with Miss Deb. And um, I love the fact that um, one of the things I love about Deb's spirit is it's truly a sweet, humble spirit. And I just treasure that in her. She is a darling one. And I love the fact that when we got together, we really brainstormed. And we said, Lord, what do you feel that the direction was going to be for us? Because God had given us the vision on becoming a woman of balance, boundaries, and boldness. And she approached me and she said, Miss, I'm really feeling like God wants me to do that mm, becoming part. It's like every time I hit that word, it's like I'm stopping, I'm stopping. And I said, you know what, that's good because I'm feeling led to talk about the balance, boundaries, and boldness part. And so we just knew immediately how God was connecting us. And so um, I love the fact that when Deb had presented that becoming part, and for those of you, can let me see a show of hands. Who was here back in June? Oh, a good portion of you. Good. 
Okay, so you know, so let me kind of just recap. She really emphasized that the, that the becoming part, the becoming part of knowing that and reinforcing the fact that we are God's workmanship and that he does have a wonderful, wonderful plan for each of our lives. And she also gave homework. So let me see the show of hands again of who did their homework over the last two months. Oh, shame, shame. Oh, good job. You have to get on your pupils. Huh? So tonight we're going to talk about the balance, boundaries, and boldness part. And um, what I want to share with you is really something that the Lord has been laying on my heart. And I think the part that we want to discuss is the fact in my spirit I've been feeling for the longest time that the Lord is about to do something very exciting. And he wants to make sure that his girls are very steadfast within him. But in order for them to be very steadfast within him, they've got to know who they are in him. And so this is where the balance, boundaries, and boldness comes into play. Because here's what's happening. The shift is starting to occur where the Lord is either going to reposition you or he is going to position you. For those of you who are being repositioned, we're feeling like, wait a minute, what's up with this, God? Why am I all of a sudden out of the loop on this direction or that direction? And I'm, I'm feeling like, what's happening? And I will be honest, I'm being repositioned, and it's not easy because I'm so tied into my church and all the things that I do for the church and with our women's ministry. But the Lord is calling me forth. How many know we can't have our hands in all these different things and be successful for God? Would you agree? Amen. And so I, I'm feeling that inadequacy, like, you know, and I'm kind of questioning my identity, and I'm going, okay, God, where does this put me? But the reality is, is that God's saying, baby girl, you are right where I want you to be. I've destined you for this time at this time, and you are right where I need you to be. So then you have the, those gals that the Lord is starting to position, and we're going, whoa, wait a minute here, because I don't know if I have it in me to do it. Huh? All right, who, who's in that category? I want to see those who are in that category. Huh? Uh, raise the hands real high. Come on. All right, let me just tell you, you do have it in you, because you have the Lord Jesus Christ in you, and you can do all things through Christ. And I will also tell you that the Lord does not call you to do something without equipping you for the task. Okay? So we're now in this season. So how does the balance, boundaries, and boldness all come into that? Well, we need to understand that the Lord needs to put some things into place. And so we have to kind of learn to let go of some things, but we also need to learn to embrace some things. So if you have your Bibles... I want you to turn to the book of Genesis for me. They, it was sweet. I have to tell you something. Jess, Jess, who had greeted me at the door, she said, um, Melissa, do you have any handouts, you know, anything like that? And I said, oh, no, I've learned long ago, Melissa does not do handouts. Forget it. I try to do a handout. The team will tell you, Melissa does not stick to the handout. Just God takes it and runs with it, and then, you know, it's what it is. So... We don't do handouts, so I apologize. If you need a piece of paper, I'll be happy to give you one. <laughs> All right, we're reading from Genesis. And I'm actually looking at Genesis um, chapter 2, if you would turn to me. Uh, chapter 2, and we're going to pick up at verses 8 through 9, and then verses 15 through 17. And it says, The Lord God planted a garden east in the Eden, and he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight for good, of good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Verse 15. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend to it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. 
All right, so let's, let's talk about this for a minute. God created the Garden of Eden. It was perfect. But do you notice something? It says down in verse 15, Then the Lord God took the man and put him where? In the garden to what? To tend to it. So automatically the Lord is saying, listen, we're going to set up some boundaries here. And so this is the first topic we're going to talk about. Boundaries. The God had established from the beginning of time boundaries to take place. And there's three things that the God wanted to do. He wanted to set within boundaries responsibility, order, and protection. So we're going to tackle the first thing, responsibilities. When the Lord God put the man in the garden, he asked him to, or he told him to what? Tend it and work it, correct? That first part of responsibility creates ownership as well as order. There was no confusion as to who was going to be doing what, and there was direction on what needed to be accomplished. The second part to the um, responsibilities is, let me, let me actually go back. I'm going to tell you what to tend to or keep it means to work, to serve, to labor, to worship, to minister, or to work in ministry. Did you guys catch all that? That's what God is saying. Now let's apply these principles to what he wants to accomplish. The second point of responsibility and what it does, it actually creates discipline within our lives. God wants us to be working. He doesn't want us lazy. And I want us to turn. You don't have to turn there. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll read it for you. It's 2 Thessalonians. And you can make note in your Bible. Uh, chapter 3, verses 10 through 11. And it says, For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, If anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. All right, how many busybodies do we know? Huh? We know a lot, right? Because that's not beneficial. And if you think about it, here's what God's trying to teach us. It was being applied both spiritually and naturally. God wanted us to physically work the land. But he also called, if you remember what I said, that, that, that Hebrew word to take heed or to work, it le literally means ministry, right? He has also called us spiritually to work with him, to partner with him for the kingdom of God. And we need not be busybodies and trying to just, you know, float around here, do this, do that. No, he created us for a purpose. And he wants us exercising that purpose. Now, let me, let me um, clarify something. How many of you are stay-at-home moms right now? Let me see a show of hands. Good. That is your job. That is your full-time job. Honor it. Do it with excellency unto the Lord. Your children are your first pry min uh, thought in ministry and to do everything you can for them. Do not look down on that at all. I've come across many women who uh, I have opportunity to fellowship with, and when I ask them their profession, they almost think that it is a, 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 like downgrading, you know, I'm just a stay-at-home mom. Please do not do that. Keep your head held high and say, this is my job, this is my responsibility, because this is what God has ordained for this time and season in my life. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. Next part I want to talk about in regards to responsibilities that under boundaries, it creates a sense of purpose, does it not? When we have charge of something, that we have ownership of something, it gives us a sense of, wow, I have a purpose, and God wants to fulfill something within me and through me. Would you all agree with me on that? Okay, so now let's talk about, along with a, a sense of purpose, it also, we talked about the um, responsibilities, or boundaries it creates responsibilities, but it also creates order. Order. How many of us need some order in our lives? Yeah, I see some hands going up. Here's what order actually provides. Order provides instruction. Now think about this for a minute. And I'm going to put it in two different categories. 
Instruction in the sense that how will we ever know what the truth is, is if we don't spend time in the Word to know what the truth is? How do you know what is right and wrong if you don't spend time in the Word of God? And so this is God's way of saying, I'm providing instruction to you so you know which way to go, whether to the right, to the left, what is right, what is wrong. The other part about uh, order, and I want us to look at the promises uh, under instruction that God gives. If you have your Bibles, can you turn to, keep something in Genesis because we're going to come back, but I want you to turn to Psalm 32. Psalm 32 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. That is a promise from your God. And when you are seeking after him, he tells you that when you seek after him with all your heart, he will make himself known to you. And when you are seeking him for direction and instruction, he will provide that for you. But here I am asking now, I want you to continue to flip to go to Psalm 119. I know, I should have warned all who warned you. We are, we are a, a, I just travel. We travel in the Bible together. We travel, travel, travel. Psalm 119, and we're going to look at verses 9 through 16 because I want this to literally be our prayer and our promise back to God. Verses 9, we're picking up at Psalm 119. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. And I rejoice in the way of your testimonies. As much as is in all riches, I will meditate on your precepts, and I will contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes, and I will not forget your word. Can we make that a promise to God? Lord, we want to strive to not forget your word. The second point I want to talk about underneath order, what it does, and it, uh, it provides direction. God desires to guide you in your everyday living, but he also wants to give you understanding on how to respond to situations. So let's talk about this for a minute. He wants you in regards to everyday living. How many of you need some guidance in regards to your marriage? Okay, good. All right, how many of you need some guidance in how to deal with children, whether it be your grandchildren or your regular children? Okay. How many of you need some guidance on uh, just your eating habits and what's important? Uh, yeah, okay, good. All right, how about how many are you looking for some guidance in regards to some situations or relationships? Okay. How about, what about work issues? Yeah. All right. Here's my question. Are you going to the Lord for guidance over that? Because every one of those things that I mentioned, the living God will speak to you about that. He will. All right. So let's take it from a different point of view. How about how do we respond to situations? How many of us, and we love this one, emotions, don't we? Yeah, we love our emotions. Sorry, men, the girls are just full of uh, estrogen tonight. Uh, let me just tell you, how do we deal with, and how many have had issues with anger in the past? Okay. How about bitterness? Okay. How about resentment? Okay. How about jealousy? Okay. How about um, forgiveness? Ah. All right, my next question. How many of you are going to seek God on how he feels about those matters? Good. Because that's where you should be going. 
because he wants the fruit of him abiding in you. And when you're harboring on to anger and resentment and bitterness, it becomes toxin in your body. And God doesn't want that. He wants the fruit of his spirit. He wants his love manifesting through and through and through. Amen? Amen. All right. So how do we respond? We talked about how are we going to respond to our emotions. But now let's talk to the third point about boundaries and what they provide. First we said, what do they provide? Boundaries provide what do they provide? Responsibilities. What's the second thing? Order. The third thing we're going to talk about is protection. And I want us to take a look. Go back to Genesis. Genesis 2. And pick up at verse 16, and it says, And the Lord God commanded to the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden ye may freely eat. Verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you have eat of it, you shall surely die. Here's the point. Protection creates a guard over our lives. But can I say, we are a stiff-necked people. Do you know what a stiff-necked person is? That's a very stubborn person. That's what the Lord used to call the Israelites. You're a very stiff-necked people. And sometimes we can be very stubborn when it comes to God. Because we think that God's trying to hold out. How many of you know what I'm talking about? When God tells us no and we kind of go, mm, yeah, well, maybe... Right? Do, do we do that? We do. And here's what God's saying. We're thinking God is withholding from us, or we think God doesn't want us to have fun. And all along he's going, do you not know that I am the Alpha and the Omega? I know the beginning and the end to what you're about to walk into. Right? And the more we get involved in something... It's either going to cause harm or it's going to just take the life right out of us. So let's talk about this. Let's just talk about some things, like things that we get involved into. Let's talk about the physical stuff. The physical stuff, um, let's just talk about alcohol for a minute. One drink leads to another drink, which leads to an addiction. Eventually, it could lead to an addiction of alcoholism. Then you have those uh, with issues dealing with drug issues. Those are the tangible things, you know, that we can really get, have issues with. But then let's also talk about things like getting involved in a lot, a lot of activities that take a lot of our time. Is it robbing us of what we need to be with God? And has he called us to it? That's the question. And so here's what I want. You stay there. I'm not going to make you turn, I promise. I'm going to read something. This is something that God spoke to Cain. And I'm going to read from Genesis 4, verse 7. And it says, If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, as, it desire, as its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Here's the thing. God doesn't want anything ruling over us except him. And we need not be bowing down to anything but him. And that's it. And so God wants to make sure that we're having freedom. And here's the thing. You know, we, we get so, uh, you know, we get so tied up with our own insecurities. Do we not? So here's the second point about protection. Second point about protection, it establishes who is Lord of your life. Are you going to be Lord of your life and do what you please? Or is God going to be Lord of your life? 
because I'm going to tell you straight out, and I'm going to be very blunt. If you've made him Lord over your life, you have no right to tell him no. He is your Lord. He is your master. And he has the greatest plan for each of you. And his covering is to protect you always. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, not to what? Hard to hurt you, harm you or hurt you, but for good. And we've got to really do a self-check here tonight and say, Lord, where are you really at my life? Am I trying to be Lord over matters, or have I really surrendered these things to you? And you are Lord. Here's what we do. When we choose God, we lose our stubborn heart, and our hearts are truly surrendered to him. And we do trust him. And that's a very big and hard word, isn't it? Trust. Because we don't, I think that one of the hardest things for us to do when it comes to trusting is because sometimes we just don't know, we always know the outcome, do we? Right? And so we really have to say, okay, God, I know you're going to work it out, and it's going to be okay. So let's talk about the th third point about what protection does underneath boundaries. It also creates balance. Did you hear what the Lord said? I'm going to go back to chapter 2, verse 17. It says, but of the tree of good and evil, um, a tree, I'm sorry, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. All right, I'm going to ask a couple questions. How many of you feel like your life is out of balance right now? Let me see hands. Okay. How many... Do you feel, um, how many of you feel like you've got yourself involved in something that you kind of knew that the Lord was saying, uh, eh, red flag, uh, eh, red flag, uh, eh, red flag, and you kind of went, eh, okay, I'm going to still do it anyway. <laughs> huh? Yeah. And so we're now at the point where that thing is literally what you were so committed to and what you were so gung-ho about is now literally taking the life out of you, Right? And it's kind of in that sense. We're physically, not physically dying, but inside it's just robbing the life out of us. How many of you think that's what God wanted for us? No. Because he came to give us what? Life. And an abundant life. So here's what we do. God knows that it robs us. And so we need to find out how do we protect ourselves from getting out of balance. So we need to make sure, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that you need to look at your boundaries. And I'm going to tell you to look at yourself because you yourself are the only one that can control your personal boundaries. Don't be looking at over at Miss Jane and Miss Karen and everybody else. Take a good look at yourself. And the first thing is you need to say, where do I need to step up in regards to responsibility? The second point is, is there anything in regards to the order that things that the God has given me is out of whack that I'm not doing? And the third point is, do I, am I under God's protection? Because if you're not under God's protection, you need to stop whatever you're doing. So now let's talk about balance. How do we protect ourselves from falling out of bounds. So that first part is we really have to do a self-evaluation on our boundaries list. The second part is in, in regards to uh, making sure you don't get out of balance. Everybody say this word for me. Obedience. Obedience. Say it louder. Obedience. I'm going to tell you something. So many of us would be in balance with God right now if they would simply walk in obedience to the direction he has called you. Truly. And you know, I think we get um, I think we get scared and we allow fear to overrule us because we don't know the unknown. 
And God's saying, I need you to trust me. Because when you walk in obedience, it's not only impacting your life, but it is also impacting the sphere of people that you are around and generations to come. So we need to stop getting, uh, having the mentality that it's about me. So I want you to turn to your neighbor. Everybody turn to your neighbor. Come on. Turn to your neighbor. And I want you to say, it's not about me. And you tell your neighbor, it's not about you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who's it about? Amen. All right. So in regards, we need to be, if we're not walking in, in obedience to God, you need to walk in obedience. And I will tell you, um, part of that obedience is the fact that some gals will say to me, well, I haven't heard from God in a while. Then you keep doing what he told you last. And you keep going the direction he told you last. Because I'm going to tell you what, your God, he is a shepherd. And he will, def he will not go against his character. And what do shepherds do? Lead. What else do they do? Guide. What else do they do? Protect. When do you think your God has ever been unfaithful to you? When? That's right. He's never been unfaithful. And so you need to go where he calls you to go. The next point I want to talk about, and I want you to really think about this, about balance, is you need to check your own heart. This is part of the responsibility part, but I really want you to check your heart. I want you to now turn to chapter 3 in Genesis, but we're actually going to pick up at verses 6 through 7. Now this is talking about the temptation of man and the fall of man. And so here's Miss Eve. So everybody kind of put your Eve hats on for a moment because we've all been there. And we can say, so here's Eve, and it says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, oh, pity, pity, she took its fruit and ate she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. All right, so let's talk about this. The first part, it says that the woman saw. What happens when we see something? Where does it go? Where? In our brain. And what does our imaginations do? starts to take off, right? Let me talk to you about something. When the woman saw that it was good, the enemy is very cunning because he is very quick and he knows that he attacks the woman's where? Mind. And here's what he does. He starts to play off of her, that E word, ready? Emotions. And here's what he's doing. He says, what are you trying to fill? What can you fill if you did this? And here's what we need to do. What am I trying to fill or attack in regards to my insecurities? Or what fears am I trying to avoid? Because the enemy is very good at trying to place value on who, uh, in, I'm sorry, in what we do versus in who we are. And who are we? Daughters of the King. And we need to know without a doubt that we are in Christ and who we are in him over and over and over again. And if we don't settle this one, literally, I'm going to tell you, if you do not settle this in your mind as well as in your heart, the enemy will continue to deceive you over and over and over and over again. Because he's very good at that. Because he plays up off of our in insecurities constantly. And here's what we do. We really then force, or we just push ourselves into activities, activities, activities. I'm going to tell you something. I was very good 
at doing a lot of activities. But I'm going to tell you, I had to learn a very hard lesson. I've been married to my precious husband for 10 years now. And um, it was early on in our marriage that I uh, just had a passion for the Lord. I was just a wild woman for Jesus. And, you know, I thought I was doing everything right. And I was doing Jesus time. I was doing ministry time. I was doing work time. I was giving to the women who would call me at all hours of the night. But then where was my man? Kind of like at the end of the list. And I'll never forget, Ron and I got married down in the Bahamas, and we were going back down there one year for our anniversary. And we uh, had met, made some Bahamian friends, very dear friends, and we were going to their church. Now, it's a Baptist church. It's a Bahamian Baptist <laughs> church. Let me just put it politely. Ron and I, along with our one Bahamian friend, were the only white people in this beautiful Baptist church. And we love the church, and we are somewhat nervous about going, I'll be honest. But I will tell you, the pastor who was speaking that night um, was speaking about marriage. Oh, boy, you should have heard the Bahamian women. Oh, no. It's nothing like we've ever experienced here in the United States. When the pastor was speaking to the husbands, the Bahamian women were going, Preach it, pastor. You just preach it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they're nodding their head, and they're doing this, nudge, nudge, nudge. Well, then the pastor started to speak to the women. Oh, boy. did the wor- I mean, you could have just dropped a pin, and it was so silent. And, you know, and every once in a while, you see the men kind of trying to shake their head. But then the women were getting this, you know, and it was really... But here's the thing. God really spoke to me. And he said, Melissa, you really are putting a value in what you're doing and not in who you are, and you're not taking up the responsibility that I've given you. Your responsibility is, yes, first to me, but you also have a husband, and you need to be attending to that man because he is your life mate. I walked out of there very humbly. I knew it was kind of one of those disciplines and one of those corrections that you knew you were kind of getting from God, and you're kind of like, oh, you knew it was. You know how you know when it's coming? I just knew it was coming. And, um, but I have to tell you what, it was a life-changing thing. And I just want to encourage each of you, really check where your heart is. What are your insecurities right now? What is the enemy? Because the enemy knows your insecurities. He knows them. So let me give you some advice. Take your insecurities to the Lord Jesus Christ and allow him to fill you up with all of him. Allow him to give you truth about those insecurities because those insecurities are nothing but fears. And what is fear? Isn't fear false evidence appearing real? That's all it is. So don't be manipulated by the enemy. The second point I want to talk about underneath checking your heart is you notice that she says it was pleasant to the eyes. I'm going to ask you a question. When you get involved in ministry, whose approval are you seeking? Man's or God's? I will tell you very uh, quickly, I, as a, a, as a position of teaching, initially when I first started to teach, I would want to seek approval from man because you want people to naturally like you. But I've come to the point in my walk with him is that I see all of you And I say, Lord, use this mouth to be a mouthpiece for you, to deliver your word, to bring encouragement and hope. But as many of you are in this room right now, I have an audience of one. And my heart is, is that God, when I present, that I really present you, and I give you all the glory. So when you are called to do something, Check your heart. Are you looking to seek after man's approval? And if you are, ask God to get that out of you. 
I love this one verse. I'm going to share it with you. And it's actually coming from the NIV version. It's 1 Corinthians 6, 12. And it says, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. We really need to rest on that verse, don't we? Because everything may be beneficial and permissible, but it may not really be beneficial to me at this point in time and season in my life. So where are you? And what is God doing? And where is God working that you need to align yourself up with him? All right, moving forward. Consequences to our actions when we fall out of balance, when we walk in disobedience to God. And we're going to look at this. Let's look at verses 7 through 11. <clears throat> So here, let's talk about consequences. The first consequence that we see through this scripture, that it impacts our relationship with God. It does. When we are out of balance, what happens? When things are, when we're going this direction and that direction, what's the first thing that goes? What's the first thing that goes? Huh? Quiet time. Our prayer time. Our Bible study time. Right? So not only are we not walking in obedience with God, then we're really not spending time with God. But do you also see what also happens? It also impacts the relationships that you're in. The first impact, it happens to be with your, if you're married, you have a spouse. The impact that it has on your relationships with your children. We get physically tired. We get emotionally tired. We get mentally tired. I want to see a show of hands. I want you to close your eyes. I want everybody to close their eyes for a minute. I want to see a show of hands. How many of you right now are emotionally, physically, mentally exhausted? I want to see hands. Lord, I just want to pray for them right now. Because, Lord, you are sending forth your word to bring refreshment and to get them back in alignment with you. And God, I'm praying for a passion that only you can instill in them and that revelation, Lord, to be brought by you. Amen. We cannot allow the enemy to get us so off balance that we're going every which way and we're being pulled like a rubber band, that we have, we're spent because then we're not doing the right thing. And that right thing is honoring the Lord God with our time, our resources, and through our families. The last thing I want to close with is boldness. So we talked about boundaries, and what are the th three things within boundaries we have to look at? What? Responsibilities order and protection the second thing we talked about balance and what was in within balance first thing where we need to be we yelled the word out together obedience so the last part we want to talk about is boldness at verse 12 we want the thing i'm going to talk about is first thing you need to do in regards to boldness you need to take responsibility do you see this Verse 12, then the man said to the woman who gave him to be with me, she gave me the tree I ate. And so then she passed the buck off saying the serpent told me to do it. Can I tell you something right now? Take responsibility. Take responsibility. If God has told you to be in a position, you need to step up, confess your sin to the Lord God, but take responsibility. The second point I want to talk about is that we need to start walking in immediately in obedience. That means we need to let go and trust God. 
Now, it may sound like I'm kind of being hard, and I'm not trying to be hard. This is where I'm trying to get you girls at. I need you girls to get to the point that you are steadfast, firm in the Lord Jesus Christ. See, because God's about to do something great. There's an anticipation. And you know what? He's calling each of you to be a part of that. And he can't have you over here when he's over here. Do you understand? And so tonight, it's not by mishap that you're here. It's really the fact that he is looking to send forth his word, and he's saying, baby girls, I need you to do me a favor. I really need you to check your spirit on a couple things. And I know already that he's spoken to your heart. Because he wants to do something great. How many know that this nation is hurting? Yeah. And how many of us are called disciples right now? Every one of us has that title. And when God calls a disciple, what is our responsibility? Go and proclaim the good news. The Lord Jesus Christ is starting a stirring. And you know what? I want to be a part of that stirring. How many of you want to be a part of that? Can you give them praise? Amen. 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 All right, so last point. We're going to talk about underneath boldness. I want everybody to say these three letters. C-P-R. Do you know what that means? Huh? In the natural, yes. But I'm going to give you what it means in the spiritual. This is Melissa's acronym. Ready? Cease. Pray. Then respond. Cease. Pray. Respond. We need to be ceasing before we're committing. We need to be praying over matters. Lord, do you want me involved with this or not? And I'm going to tell you, I love this. And Joshua, I'm just, you don't have to turn there. I'll, I'm going to turn there for us real quick. Joshua, you know, God had called the people of Israel to not make a, a uh, pact with any of the um, people around them. And you know, I love this in Joshua because here's what Joshua does. This is Joshua 9 for those who are taking notes, 9, 14. And so here are some people that come beside Joshua and they're trying to basically deceive Joshua and the people. Excuse me. And here's, uh, oops, move on. Here's what, here's what happened. Ready? Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. Ouch. We need to be asking God for direction. We need to ask him. When someone comes up to you and says, would you like to be a part of this ministry, please do not let your first response be yes. Unless the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to you five minutes prior or the night before and said, this is the vision I have for you, this is the direction I want you to go, then you walk it out. But if he has not done that, please cease. Pray over what, he, what was presented to you. And then respond. There's nothing wrong with praying about something. And as Matthew said, let your yes be yes and your no be no. As women, becoming women of balance, boundaries, and boldness, we will learn to say no. Not in a harsh way, but in a confidential way because our security lies in God, knowing that the plans that he has for our lives are for good and that he's going to work out all the details, and that you don't need to be involved in this activity, that activity, and this thing and that thing. I opened up saying that I really believe that the Lord is causing a shift, and he is starting to position and reposition. So in closing, 
I'm going to really ask you a question. Where are you in the positioning and repositioning? Are you walking in obedience to the thing that the Lord Jesus Christ has called you to? And are you ready to meet with him? See, girls, we don't have luxury of time. We really don't. There are too many hurting people out in the world that need our Jesus. We've got work to do. This is our garden. We are to take heed and work it with our Lord Jesus Christ for him. Amen? Amen. I'm going to ask you to just bow your heads. I'm going to pray for you. Lord, you're a very good God. <laughs> Real good. And God, I know that you're ministering to hearts right here in this room right now. And Lord, there are some that are just, they don't know, they have either gotten off track with you because of things of the world where they have been deceived and they have allowed their own flesh to interfere because they were wanting acceptance from man. God, I pray right now that you speak to those hearts and you remind them that, that they are your baby girls and the only acceptance that they need comes from you. Then, Lord, we have those that we've been dealing with because of our securities and our, our, our insecurities and our fears about who we are. And we think we get so caught up, Father, in, in what we're doing for you. And not that that's wrong, but we're putting too much emphasis there. Lord, move in us. Help us to know that our security lies in who we are in you. Our value of who we are in you. And Lord, I believe that you are repositioning your women, your daughters, because it's going to be a fighting battle that you have asked us to engage in. You will lead the way, but we have got to be ready. And we've got to be encouraged. And we have, have to have hope because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the Almighty. He is the one and only. Lord, so I'm asking you right now in this room that you just still in our hearts all that you desire for us to be and become. We're confessing our, our faults. We're confessing our sins to you personally, Lord. Where we have got out of alignment, Lord, we're asking you for forgiveness. And we're saying, Lord, we are committing ourselves back to you to fulfill the things that you've called us to do. And we will rest in assurance, being confident of this, that he who began the good work will bring it to completion. And our expectation, Lord God, We'll rest in you because our eye has not seen, our ear has not heard, and our mind has not perceived what the Lord God has prepared for us. So reign, mighty God, reign. I ask this in your mighty, precious name. Amen. Thank you for hearing me. Amen.